Hi, and welcome to Three Questions With. Today, I'm, I got my friend Jack Wang from Long Island Financial with us. Jack, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on, Kevin. I love this format. So, Jack, um, coming into back to school season again, seems like it's always back to school season. But one of the interesting things for me is I was having a conversation with a friend who's around my age. And I'm in my 50s, and he was um, talking about his daughter going to college for the first time. And, you know, just the overwhelmingness of it, you know, where it's costing him like $50,000 a year. And I'm like, well, how do you find a balance between saving? Because he wants to pay for his daughter's college, which is amazing, great dad. But he also has to try to plan for his retirement. It was kind of funny, Jack. He looked at me and go, well, that's simple. I'm just not retiring. But how do you find that balance? I mean, you know, he said it kind of tongue in cheek, but pretty much factual, though. What happens there? How do you do that? Yeah, you know, as a parent, you, you know, I understand trying to help your son or daughter. You want the best for them, obviously. And for a large part, parents expect their children to do better than them. Um, but as sort, of the, as sort of the saying goes, when you get the safety briefing on the airline, right, when the mass, you know, oxygen masks drop down, they tell you put your own on first before you help your kids. And that's really true here is that, you know, yes, we want to help our sons and daughters with school, um, but you really got to take care of yourself because, after all, they can get a scholarship, they can get loans easily. Even if they get loans, you can always help them make the payments. The loans, you know, don't always have to be in your name but at least you retain the flexibility to uh, help yourself if you need to, because you can't always count on your kids helping you, even with the best of intentions. You know, even just stuff happens, life happens. And so you got to take care of yourself first. So Jack, I want to talk a little bit about sticker shock, because I can remember 35 years ago, whatever it was, going to college, and it cost a couple thousand dollars. I remember yelling, you know, because a book costs 30 bucks or something crazy like that. Not the case now, it's a little more expensive, but isn't it true in some situations, I guess I use the analogy of buying a car. We look at a school and say, oh, it's 35,000, I can't afford it. I gotta look at $25,000 schools. But maybe depending on how much they want your child, you may get a better financial aid package from the $35,000 school that may make it more affordable. Absolutely. Yeah, and parents really get fixated and scared off by the sticker price, right? So if you think about it as the sticker price of a car, it's the tuition, room, board fees all in, right? And nobody, well, you hope not, but nobody walks up to a dealer and says, I'll pay sticker price on this car. Well, you know, the analogy with school is, you know, everybody sort of gets uh, sort of infatuated with the Ferrari, right? Like, you know, but uh, really, you should be looking at the right school for you, you know, as much as you love the Ferrari, but you really might need the SUV. And depending on the brand you're looking for and what they have for customers, they might really want you. And the more they want you, the more they're going to be willing to negotiate, the more discounts, aka scholarships, they're going to give you to make that actual cost a lot cheaper. So don't get fooled by the sticker price. Find the school that really wants you and your cost can come down significantly. Jack, so I guess the last question I have should have been the first question I had is a lot of um, students, I remember this, you know, wanted to go to college, you know, oh, you need to fill in the financial aid forms. Okay, so you take them, you bring them home, you hand them to mom and dad, and they're like, I don't know what to do with these. You know, I see this a lot with first generation students, no one in my family went to college before me, so they had no idea, you know, what assets you need to include, what assets you don't include. And just, you know what, they do the best they can, but they skip half the lines because they don't know what goes there. Right. It's right. really important to do them right, and that's something you can help people with? Absolutely. It really is important to do it correctly because exactly your point, people don't know what to inc include. And, and the most obvious questions really aren't that obvious. Um, you know, do I include child support? Do I include alimony? Do I include, uh, you know, the 401k withdrawal they took out last year? You know, those aren't ob always obvious on the financial aid form. And so getting professional help is always worth it because what happens is if you make a mistake, that can cost you real money, right? You put, you put an extra zero in, which is a very common error, or you put in something you didn't need to, it's not just a mistake. It just costs you real money in financial aid. So get expert help on that. Jack, bonus question. Um, I find that people don't think about it until now 
It's like, hey, yeah. you know, my son and daughter is going to college. You know, I should probably think about how I'm going to pay for this. <laughs> you know, shouldn't, yeah. Isn't it one of those things, the earlier the better, so maybe you can implement some things that, you know, you really can't do at the last minute? Yeah, the earlier is the better. I'll give you an example of my own stepdaughter. She's only going to be a sophomore in high school. Well, we've already gone on some college tours, mostly to just try to eliminate uh, options, right? Just to see schools that she might not like, you know, doesn't like big ones, doesn't like small ones, whatever. Uh, but also, uh, schools really tell you differently on how they treat finances and whether they really focus on making college affordable or we went to one school where they didn't, they didn't mention it at all because they get so many applications because that's the Ferrari that everybody falls in love with. They get so many applications. Hey, if you can't pay, the guy behind you in line can. So we don't really need to give you any money. Now, obviously, they didn't say it that way, but it was definitely clear in the message. You got to be able to figure that out. The earlier you figure it out, the less heartache there is for everybody down the road. So, Jack, how can people reach out to you? How can they learn more? Yeah, people can always uh, reach me by email at jack at longhornfin.com, or they can go to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash longhornfin. Jack, really appreciate taking your time to jump on the show. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. I really appreciate being on. So you just watched three questions with brought to you by the New England B2B Networking Group. For more information, visit newenglandb2bnetworking.com.